Welcome to New Covenant. This is Jeremiah, Michael Pearson, 2022. And this is in that particular playlist. I have three channels at this time on YouTube. And we have one being prepared for Odyssey, which I don't know what's going to happen. But this is Jeremiah. He is on fire. We've got the word of the living God here. We've got work to do. We've got the Father's uh, a workman handling accurately, rightly dividing the word of truth. And let's, let's pursue that endeavor. Once again, we greet you in the only name given. That would be playlist number 52 here. For those of you interested in getting into uh, what the name of Jesus means, and uh, it's very significant, but we greet you in that name. There's only one name given, and we use that name, that one name, uh, amongst men. Uh, if you're confused, stop being confused. So here we are. Jeremiah is just going to praise the Lord. And, and, uh, let's just praise the Lord and for what he has done. And let's just worship the Lord because our time should go to him as a sacrifice of praise. And, and we're going to offer up our time and our energies and our glory to glorify him. So we're going to use our energies to magnify the Lord and make him uh, enlarged. Let, let's increase those that are saved. Let us... Uh, glorify the name of Jesus Christ and the name of our Father by doing what? Just doing what we're doing now. Get busy doing church work. That, that's it. Boots at the ground, right? Boots on the ground. Jeremiah is here. He is on fire. We, we're smoking here. We got, I, got a, I have a forehead of flint. I have uh, lips of flame and my heart overflows with a good theme. And, and our, our subject matter, my theme is beauty today, okay? I'm going to get started on playlist number seven. Yeah, and we'll get started momentarily as we just rejoice and sing praises unto our God. Praise means he's done something good. Worship means he's valuable, so I'm going to do a lot of things to demonstrate how valuable he is to me. Worship the Lord. He's, he's indeed valuable. That's the point. And uh, we have admiration. Admiration is very similar to I'm in awe. Uh, I marvel. I wonder. That's what it means. And his name is Wonderful Counselor. Let's get going. Let's get going. We're going to get into beauty. Playlist number seven. I'm on my first board here. Uh, let me give you just a quick preview, uh, a quick uh, prologue here, an introduction. Beauty is my favorite subject. Probably it's one of my two or three most uh, uh, satisfying subjects. And we're going to, I'm going to have at least 200 videos on beauty. So for those of you who are looking to to get into what we call, what I call like the positive um, situation here, it's going to be beauty. Um, um, I will give you an, uh, an introduction, and then as I read through the Bible, I will refer to this playlist, and I will have various lessons available, videos, under this playlist, okay? And they will come from my reading through the Bible. Okay? That's it. That's it. And of course, you'll see me read through that to the Bible when I get to a segment. Uh, to give an example, before we get started on beauty today, uh, I have already went through Psalm 1, and I went through Matthew 5. So I looked at the word blessed, and I looked at the definition and the context. And I think a lot of you are going to enjoy the definition and the context uh, of the, the, the method of uh, 
showing you meaning, cognate, and then context. Okay? I just went through some of that here. Uh, uh, content analysis in plays, playwrights, or plays, movie scripts, um, novels, biographies, autobiographies, documentaries, even documentaries, but not so much documentaries, but most of the things that we read have a certain format, and I just went through the format, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to start get, looking at things from a format perspective a little. Uh, I think that doing that is very, uh, is very significant when we have some sort of story to tell. I could use that methodology or pedagogy here with beauty in, the, in, in some of these lessons, but I've decided to do that. I'm going at it item by item without a lot of um, continuity or um, structure and development. I, I basically have kind of left that alone uh, for the most part. Now I do, do, I do have some of that, but for the most part I'm going item by item and I and I, I like teaching this way. It, it's kind of like a, um, the way my dad liked to teach a lot. The, the, um, just a, a, a kind of a, uh, I, don't know, I don't know what to say. Um, it's not fragmented, it's just, it's just not sequenced. I think it's a good word. Um, some of my lessons are sequenced and I will get into more um, sequence as these introductions to these playlists uh, continue. Uh, and let's get into beauty and I'll just uh, let you know how I teach things alone for a while. I'll talk to you, I'll share that with you a little bit more later in some of the videos. Um, just style of teaching where uh, you allow the listener to organize a lot on their own and and I at first I was going to and, and I'm not going to do this anymore but at first I was going to uh, my plan was to originally do that and I'm backing away from that where we have just information and you the listener you're going to organize the pieces as I move on I do want to spend more time with organization sequence, uh, helping you understand the big picture as opposed to giving you the puzzle pieces and letting you come to your own conclusions and your own arrangements, okay? Um, and beauty is a subject that probably needs more structure. It needs more of, a, of an organized development so that to help you understand. In other words, to put things uh, out there so that you can see how things are connected and so forth. But we'll stop right there. I don't want to go into that any further. Uh, and I'm kind of thinking out loud a little because uh, I'm, I'm thinking about doing that. So I'm kind of, it's kind of like, uh, you know, playing it by ear. And, but uh, because either way you learn with someone giving you a sequence and connecting things for you, or they give you information, either way, it's, it's, it, it, both, both methods, methods are legitimate. It, it's fine either way. So let's go. Let's, let's get going. I was going to turn to something. Or I was going to show you Psalm one, but that's okay. I, I wanted to, to give you case in point as to how things are are going are going here in terms of of showing you uh, category ten, which is uh, context, context, contextualism, and definition or cognates and so forth, whereby that you understand things simply by paying attention to the term and where it is. Okay? You know, it, it, I pointed out that Psalm 1 has a reference to blessed, which is not the same rep, which is not the same word that the Master uses. In other words, the great-grandfather of our lovable Master Jesus Christ, who we love dearly, and we thank him continually 
for his love, and we enjoy uh, the fervent love and fellowship of Jesus Christ as our prime, our prime um, joy out of all the joys we have. But uh, I, I, I showed you how the word from the grandfather meant something a little different, or it, it, it wasn't it wasn't the same as the. the new reference to the word blessed under the new covenant. And these, um, what I'm showing you is very significant, and we're going to let that go. Because I'm just telling you a little bit about the ministry and how it, how it works and how, and how I am going to, uh, I, I'm going to be, this is going to be a happy time, you know, where I can rejoice together with you in learning and enjoy the whole process and um, most Bible teachers, uh, if not every Bible teacher I worked for, and I've worked for quite a few Bible teachers, I, I've been uh, uh, an elder pretty much. They call him an elder or not much of an usher. And, and I played piano for uh, quite a few Bible teachers, and they were happy to have me uh, there to play for them. And, and I enjoyed serving and playing uh, for them. Every Bible teacher I, I played for, you know, I've, and, uh, and, and, uh, and I rejoice in the ability to use and stand in the grace of God and to rejoice a, a reasonable retort or reasonable response to the opportunity to please Big Daddy. Okay? Let's get going if we get to beauty, and uh, I'll just share with you a few things about this ministry in general as to how it works and so forth, and some of you are, are, can already see that, but I just want to uh, point that out, that pointed out to you that uh, there's a method to this situation here, and, uh, and I'm very happy that we're getting into beauty, and I've mentioned it before, I'll mention it again, that this is the biggest and the most this is where we're headed, and it's Christianity is is John chapter 16, but it's also Revelation 21. You know, it's just John chapter 16, uh, James, count it all joy, James. All of us are. Job, and then there's the other side of this whole thing, which is glory, which is what we're going to get into. I'm going to get into glory right now, big time, and we're going to talk a lot about everything that's beautiful and everything beautiful coming your way. It, I will probably have more videos on beauty than anything that I teach here. I have 52 categories. Um, and playlist available under Jeremiah Michael Pearson 2022 and I have uh, under playlist 2 there'll be uh, at least 24 subtexts or you know there'll be 24 precepts there because sound doctrine is, is huge and uh, I don't know what I'm doing, how many I'm going to have on 11 which is living bread soul food's going to be uh, well, it may not be that big But a couple of these are going to be big. But uh, science is done for now. I, I don't have any more time for science, uh, basically. Um, I, I probably won't have any, any more time. Science is done. I've been studying science, Bible science, for a long time. I had some help from Dr. Jim, who, I, who is a wonderful Christian man from Greece. And I didn't know that where he came from was so beautiful. I have some pictures in, from Greece here. I get a movie from what a beautiful place. Wow. It's, uh, uh, there's something about the clean air there or something. It's like Hawaii or something. But let's get going. Let's get going. And speaking of beauty, boy, and we know that Hawaii is beautiful. Wow. What a beautiful place. Let's get going. I mean, from the pictures I've seen, I haven't been there. And I don't need to go there right now anyway. I, 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 if I want to go there during the millennium, Christ, Christ, uh, Christ millennium, I can go there. The Lord will let me go to Hawaii during the 1,000 year reign of Christ. 
because the meek shall inherit the beauty. The meek shall inherit beauty. That's the point. I had a Christian, I had a, 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 a pastor tell me the other day, he's a friend of mine, he told me, he said, uh, well, you are poor. I said, no, 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 no. I said, Dr. T, let me tell you something. Let me share something with you that you already know. We're just here to re rejoice in all of the scriptures that, that we have to share with one another. Iron sharpens iron and so forth. But I told him, I said, you know what? I'm, a, I'm the richest man in the world. It's just that I haven't gotten my inheritance yet. The trust is still holding my dispersal. Matthew chapter 5. Because, let me share something with you about beauty before we get into the, the lesson germane. What, here, let me tell you what's beautiful about Matthew chapter 5, the first teachings of the Master. The first teachings of the Master who we love dearly. Do you know what he was saying in many ways? On many fronts, he was saying that beauty is, is, is postponed psychologically by a posthumous covenant. In other words, I've made an agreement to serve the Lord and I agree to serve the Lord. And that agreement and the completement of that agreement by your yield and your will means that you're going to inherit everything intrinsically and externally. You're going to inherit a title, a child of God. You're, you're going to inherit everything on the earth is yours. Uh, you're going to have mercy from God, a lot of care and, and a lot of love from Big Daddy. And that's what you're going to get based upon you placing yourself in a position of humiliation before the Lord your God, seen in what? Examples or evidence of that is repentance and baptism number one. And the master is talking to a group of people. Some of them are not going to repent and they're rejecting uh, the table of humiliation. It was a table of offense to the Pharisees. How dare you ask me to kneel down to anybody? I don't even want to kneel down to God. I, I'm just too proud. I, and so he was, he was giving a, 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 a quick lesson on the behaviors of people who are going up and who are getting everything. And the people who, who, who are greedy and trying to hold on to everything and take, take everybody's possessions, they were being confronted right away at the beginning of, of the master's ministry that the people, you, you think that you own a lot, you don't own really anything because you're going to lose it. See, because there is a there is a projection, that there is a peek into the future at the beginning of Matthew chapter 5. It's very significant because the people who, are, who have things now, you're not going to keep anything. And the people who are humble and loving, who don't prioritize material things, they're the ones that are going to get everything. That's one of the significant points and the beauty of the first lesson of the Master. The beauty, the beauty of it is, is that he is declaring to people who are caring people, who are going to learn how to be caring people, people who, who, who want the truth, who don't resist the truth, and they're going to take in the truth and learn of me. They're going to learn of him. And they're going to be winners in all of this, and they're going to get all of that. Inherit the earth, the kingdom of heaven, compassion from Father. They're getting all of it. And because they've adopted this lifestyle, and they've hungered after this lifestyle of being caring and being intelligent and, and so forth and sacrificial, they're going to be called the sons of God forever. And there's nothing more beautiful than for you to be called a child of Mr. Holy. 
It is the goal here, big time. I, some of you don't get lost in the smoke here. Uh, uh, the, the goal here is the end game. Some of you are losing track of the end game here. And the devil will do that to people. He'll, he'll, he'll get them uh, so much involved in, in, in this particular faith walk that they'll lose track of the end game, which is the helmet of salvation. Your hope of the rapture coming to you. What we're going to do in this uh, ministry right now is we're going to start focusing on the word hope out of these three. These three abide. Faith, hope, and love. And we're going to focus on hope and love pretty much for the rest of my servitude because I already have a channel going up for error. I, I don't want to get into error anymore. I just looked at False Apostles, I'll be loading that up under Jeremiah Michael Pearson, 2022, sin. That's what you have to type in. And it's a long type, but it, you're going to have to do it. That's the way it goes. Now, it'll come back up on your computer screen, uh, you know, as your favorites or something. Uh, but uh, all you got to do is hit that. what you frequent on, on, on your computer and so forth, it will sometimes uh, remind you of where you like to go and so forth. But here's my point. Beauty is something that is extremely significant, and let's get into it. Such as, just as the, the, the overall persona and the overall aura of the beginning of Matthew chapter five and the rest of it, of, 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 your, of your New Testament especially, where the master is focusing on an exchange and a a, a, a a yielding to a humiliated a life of humiliation with uh, perks. The life the life of humiliation has intelligence number one. Uh, a, a Christian life is. Is, is intelligence on steroids and you're also going to get father's love in your heart and you can't beat those that dynamic duo right there plus you get fellowship from Christian brethren you own that and you don't need faith once you've started your Christian walk uh, in terms of you already own a lot of stuff right out of the gate. If you've, been a, if you've been a Christian for a couple of years and you've studied your Bible, you're already privy to what most people have never or will ever understand because that's the way God has worked. Many are called, few are chosen. And to get this intel, this intellectual stuff here, is, is mind-blowing. That's why Jesus is called wonderful, because we're sitting back going, we're in awe as to all of this, all of these teachings. My 52 playlists here take you to a place where very few people have ever gone or ever will go. And, and, and I am in many ways the captain of intelligence. But it's more along the lines of knowledge true knowledge and wisdom more than data. Data is not beautiful unless you can put it where it belongs. Let's get into beauty as, as we get started on beauty. And I put in heaven too to kind of remind us heaven, but beauty, heaven. Let's get started. Let's define beauty or beautiful. Okay, in, in the Hebrew, it's yafe, and it, it, it refers to something like along the lines of Sarah was beautiful. I'm not going to go to that scripture, but the Bible said that Sarah was an attractive woman. Okay, so that means that she was on the outside. God designed her in the womb to be beautiful. He wanted her to be beautiful. And obviously, Abraham agreed 
with that opinion. <laughs> so heaven is beautiful, Shemaya, glory on high, the highest paradise, Parapanangelo. Uh, that's where real beauty is, and it's always beautiful in heaven. The only time it ever gets ugly in heaven is when the Lord allows the devil to speak in heaven, which is something the Lord has allowed ugly to do. So, anyway. Now, Horus, Horus or Horeos, it's probably Horus in Greek, but it's, um, it means seasonal character or seasonal beauty. It means inner quality. Uh, in Indiana here, it gets beautiful in the spring if it's cool here, like it is today. This is, this is the most beautiful time in Indiana, and, and, and it comes in once a year. And it usually only lasts a couple of weeks. And summer gets a little hot, and you can have a hot Indian summer here with really high humidity. Um, but here's the point. It's seasonal where it's not extremely cold here or not hot here with Indian summer, etc. There's only a couple of weeks here in Indiana whereby that it's really what we might call ideal or beautiful. I'm not saying that heat's not beautiful or cold. Snow is not beautiful. That's not my point. My point is, is that it's seasonal where it might be considered spring or the optimum. You're, you're seeing the world's uh, best face so to speak, okay? So beauty is defined as something natural like Sarah. God designed her to be beautiful. God designed rose bushes to be beautiful. That's what he designed. He, he, he purposed that to be. He wanted red flowers, red roses. He wanted this. Therefore, it came into existence by his own providence. And things exist, and they have their, their day, they have their arena based upon his sovereign will. He is sovereign. He is exousia in the Greek. He is kratos. He is the executive authority that has his will that allows certain things to exist and they have their and they have their own day in the sun. That's what Horeos means, or he, or, or Horus, or uh, my Greek friends don't get upset at me. I should I uh, would it help you, Carlos Hirthate? Would it help you to say that I think Greece is a very beautiful place, my goodness. What a, I have some pictures. There's something about Greece. It's it's one. It's, I think it's the clean air you guys have. But let's get going. Exousia, executive authority that allows beauty to exist. And the reason why he's allowing beauty to exist is because he thinks beautiful. Father, Big Daddy, your Father which art in heaven, and and cast all your cares upon him because with him. There is much care for you. He, he decides. He, you know, it's nothing exists outside of his will. You can't come to Father and say, I want to do something that you don't want done. You can't do that. People on TV say you can, who, who, are, in, who are in synagogues or whatever. Uh, uh, you can't do that. So there's natural beauty, which is like Yafe. Uh, Yafe also refers to inner beauty. Um, I'm going to double check some references for you later on down the road. And then there's timed and scheduled beauty. And that basically comes from a time clock. A plant has a clock in its DNA, or, or, or there's a time when certain things emerge that are beautiful. And the Lord. 
and the Lord allows that to emerge. It will never emerge without him wanting it to happen. Some people think they eat because they want to eat. Because we live in Babylon right now in general. In America, and, and the world is basically Babylon. People think that they, that, they, that they do things on their own. And that's ridiculous. We Quakers, we know that nothing exists outside of the will of God. If you ask God for something ridiculous... You're going, to get a, you're going to get a proper response to your ridiculous request. Such as what I see people on TV saying that they, that they have petitioned uh, Father for. In a manner that's ludicrous. That's, it shows bad character. So beauty is Yahweh, it's natural beauty. Uh, it's, it's just natural design, and of course, um, we see ugly based upon sin. See, in the world, you see ugly and beauty. Ugly and that which is beautiful. So that's the way it goes. But ugly didn't come through God. God did not originate ugly. Adam and Eve and the devil, they are the ones who spawned ugly. They're the ones who put thorns in the rose bush. They're the ones that brought tornadoes. Humans and fallen angels. God did not bring all of this forth. He allowed it to emerge. When God created heaven and earth, he didn't create a jail. He created a jail when people were worthy of being jailed. God doesn't birth evil or punishment. He doesn't do that. I'm going to stop right here. We'll come back to defining natural beauty and Seth in Hebrew, timed beauty, seasonal beauty. And then we'll talk about inner character as beauty. These kind of mesh together, but uh, we'll keep it separate and simple for now. This is Jeremiah signing off. We'll be right back with 7.2 in Beauty Heaven. Shalom, peace, and quiet, harmony, the city of peace, Jerusalem. As the mountains are around Jerusalem, the Lord is around his people. From this time forth, it shall ever be. The Lord is around his people. Maranatha will be right back. <laughs> 